Welcome to a little video on my watches. People have asked about the watches I like, and I have gone way down the rabbit hole without spending a ton of money, but I get a ton of enjoyment from them. We're gonna start with one of my favorites. I have a lot of favorites, but this legit is one of the top ones, the Hamilton Khaki Field Auto in 38. This is just a great watch. It's beautiful. It tells me what time it is. It tells me what day it is. Uh, I have to remember to wind it, but it's got an 80 hour power reserve, so, you know, it's forgiving of my forgetting. I just love looking at it. I love the little details. It's a little bit hard to photograph, both because I have big lights for big things and I don't have a macro lens and it doesn't have an AR coating. I love the guilloche uh, pattern, the, the ridges. It looks like grooves on a vinyl record. The stock strap really sucked. So I alternate between this Horween leather and this single pass RAF in the Connery pattern. I like the looks very much. Fantastic, fantastic daily watch. And next up is a modern classic, the Casio G-Shock 5610U, GWM something. This thing is just perfect. Uh, it is the essence of watch. It is the culmination of all timekeeping hor horological pursuits. It's got a, a calendar that's accurate for over a century. It's solar powered. It's, it syncs up to atomic clocks every night through satellites. You've got alarms. You've got multiple time zones. You've got countdown timers. You've got chronometers. It's got a light that you can actually see in the dark. It's waterproof to 200 meters, which is more than I am. You could drop this from 30 uh, meters and it doesn't break, unlike me again. And it's just unapologetically what it is. It is just a rugged everyday tool. And I, I just love that. It's simple. Some people think it's ugly. I think its simplicity makes it beautiful. And then we have the height of 80s cool, the Casio calculator watch, the Marty McFly model, digital quartz. It's got a clock. It's got a calendar. It's got the day. It's got a calculator. It does alarms. It does countdowns. It does all those things. You know, you can't see it in the dark and, you know, don't get it wet or don't feed it after midnight, but it'll get you through seventh grade. It's also very light and comfortable. And, you know, you have to be a certain kind of person to, to pull it off. And I like to think that, like Sting, I am that kind of person. Next is the first watch that made me say, ooh, I need that. Just every little detail about it was just fantastic. I, I just love all the complications. I love the slide rule, bezel, though I don't know how to use it. No one seems to. I love that you can use it as a stopwatch and all that, and you can do split time and all that fun stuff. I just love, love, love this watch. You know, it was the first one where I was like, that's, that's the one I have to have. And so I have it. One of the really nice things about this watch is that while it has an alarm, it's pretty much useless, but you can use that dial to track a second time zone. Here I've got it set to London. The stock bracelet was pretty terrible, but I got this one from Uncle Straps. It used to be Uncle Seiko, and it's fantastic with the middle clasp and doesn't debilitate my arm like the old one did. And one of the things I love about this watch so much is just the distortion of the glass. It's supposed to be a flaw. I think it's one of the whole reasons to have this thing. And while I have it on the bracelet now, I also quite like the green and yellow striped Marine National. And I've got a uh, black sailcloth, though if you get one of these flight masters, the 21 millimeter lug width can be a problem. Worth it though. The Omega Speedmaster is one of the all time great watches. The one I would dearly love to have. I just admire everything about its design, but it's a $7,000 watch. And while, yeah, I could, there are just so many other things I'd rather spend that kind of money on. So, yeah, sue me. I got an homage. I have the Pagani Design PD1701. It has the look. It has the function. It keeps better time. And $100 versus $7,000. That's quite nice. Uh, it's got a, a case back that says, hey, Moonwatch. I'm a Moonwatch, too. The stock bracelet was really crappy, but it's on a, a president from Uncle Straps, and this strap is what the uh, Speedmaster would have had in 71, my birth year. So I got that going for me, which is nice. This next beauty is one my wife bought for me in Paris last year. It is a moon phase quartz with all kinds of complications. It's very Art Nouveau, kind of looks in a lot of ways like a Patek Philippe that would cost more than my house, but uh, it does not. I don't wear this one very often in the shop. It's relatively fragile with a Hesselite crystal and 
Just not a good thing to have around metal chassis, but it is so beautiful. It's very Jules Verne. And next, I love, love, love the Jungen's Max Bill, absolute classic of Bauhaus design. It also costs $1,000, and given that it's kind of dressy, I wouldn't wear it very often. So I have this other German watch, this Iron Annie Bauhaus commemorative edition, which scratches that Bauhaus itch, which sounds like a Mel Brooks song. Anyway, it's lovely, it's elegant, and it again has those wonderful distortions. And from beautiful, elegant watches to watches that go thud. This is the Seiko Arnie. It's a big boy. It's got a little bit of dust on it because I wear it outside a lot. It is a relatively giant watch, not for everyone. I've got pretty big wrists, though, so I think I pull it off. And since owning this watch, I've had no extraterrestrial alien attacks, so I think it does exactly as advertised. It's a little bit hard to use the features on this because everything is... Uh, so, so waterproof. It's actual diver rated 200 meters, you know, hardcore. But uh, it does work and it has all the features of the other digital watches here. But it's an anti digi watch, which means it has one little trick, which I really like, but it's a little bit of a pain to show on this. So I'll show you on the other anti digi in a little bit because it works much the same way. But I really do like this. It has a lot of presence. It's very, very brutalist and modern in a very 80s way, a different way than the uh, Casio calculator watch for sure. Marty McFly versus Schwarzenegger. The, uh, the bezel clicks are very satisfying. And speaking of movies, yeah, yeah, it's the 38 millimeter version of the Interstellar Murph watch. I like some of the Christopher Nolan movies a lot. I have not in fact seen Interstellar, but I just really thought this was a fantastic looking, very elegant watch. It's very militaristic in a World War II kind of way. It's simple. Uh, I just really like everything about this. There you can see the display case back. Same display case back, same movement as on the uh, 38 millimeter field auto. It's just a very simple watch that does what it says and does it every time and looks great doing it. The uh, stock strap was really stiff to break in. So I also have this uh, nice brown leather, kind of a, a rolled padded one that I got from a company in England. And I, I mix and match them. Different straps really transform this watch. It's a, a thing of beauty and a joy for, oh, hopefully a few decades at least. From the most expensive watch in my collection to one of the cheapest, this is the Casio World Timer, often called the Casio Royale by those who miss out on calling it the Casio Royale. This is a great thing. You've got world time, you've got timers, alarms, stopwatches, and all that. But most importantly, for my purposes when traveling, is that in the regular time mode, you can choose between three presets. So here we are in Memphis, and I will change over to New York, and then to London, and then to Sydney. And uh, when traveling, that's just really nice if you set it where you're going to be. You land, you push one button, everything changes, and it has a pretty good light compared to a lot of the uh, old digital watches. It's easy to scratch. It's easy to damage. The bracelet isn't great, but it doesn't pull your hair out. But again, $35, kind of the perfect travel watch, kind of the perfect do most everything that doesn't involve scratchy things watch. Continuing the theme of inexpensive Casios, this is the Duro. This is a big 44 millimeter, I think, uh, 200 meters water resistance quartz watch. It is simple. It does what it says on the 10. The bezel's not as good as the uh, Seiko, but this is a $50 watch. I think I paid $35 for it. Uh, it looks good. Uh, it works. It works really well. It doesn't lose time or, or gain time. I think a, a second or two a month, that's negligible. I liked it so much that when I heard they were being discontinued, I ran out and got the blue version too. I think I paid $40 for that, though I've heard rumors of people finding them at Walmart and such for like 12 bucks in the cutout because they have been discontinued. There's a new version of this that's smaller, but it's only 100 meters water resistance, and uh, a lot of the details change in ways that I don't find as pleasing. But, you know, for an inexpensive watch, this thing is pretty much ideal if you don't want digital. The stock strap is not the best. It's cheap. It's rubber. It works, but I have them on these nice NATOs, and I think they really make the watch more comfortable and look better. And finishing out, back to Casio. This is the G-Shock GM2100, the Cassie Oak. 
because it looks like a very expensive watch that I would never want. And this thing is just full of geekery. All the little details are just perfect. It has brushed surfaces and textures, and I can just st get lost staring at it. It's just really a lot of fun to look at. It's a hyper-modern thing. And uh, my favorite thing about it, which I'm going to show now, much like on the uh, Seiko Arnie, is because it's anti-digi, once you set it, here I'm telling it I'm going to set it, you can cycle through different time zones. I'm going from Chicago, you know, Memphis. And let's go over and tell it that we're in uh, London, though it has like 60 different time zones slash cities listed. And once you select that, watch what happens. I'm sorry, that just makes me happy every time. Is it possible for a watch to be industrial and beautiful at the same time? I think so. So these are my watches, and as long as I try to keep in mind that you can't buy a personality, you can't buy a sense of self, same with guitars, same with clothes, shoes, you name it. You know, Steve McQueen was not cool because of the watches he had. Steve McQueen was cool, and he had watches, and so we find those watches cool. I try very hard to find watches that reflect my own personality, as opposed to giving me something, giving me a life that I've always wanted. Everything would be better if I only had this one thing. You know, that's a trap we all fall into with all kinds of things. But uh, I'm really happy with where this collection is at. There's one or two other little pieces I'd like to get along the way, but they're minor. None of these are terribly she-she. You know, whether it's the $50 watch or the $500 watch, I like them both. I like them each for different reasons. If I had to choose only one, obviously, you know, but there's something about these little gadgets that I find very interesting. And that goes along with my interest in photography and guitar and music and amplifiers and all that. So it's kind of all of a piece, for me at least. Hope you've enjoyed this, all seven of you who watched this far. Thanks for watching.